Hello everyone and welcome back to Fun with Fitzy. Today's video is on dividends. We are in chapter 15 and this is video 1. We've talked about dividends a little bit in class already, but just to remind you, dividends are what a corporation gives out. So it's a distribution by a corporation to its shareholders on an equal basis. So if they give out money as dividends, every shareholder will get an equal portion of that money. Uh, dividends may be in the form of cash or in more shares. Normally they are given in common shares. Now there are three things that must occur in order for a corporation to have dividends. They must have sufficient retained earnings, they must have adequate cash, and the board of directors must actually declare a dividend. Okay, so those are the three things that must happen in order for a dividend to occur. A board of directors cannot declare a dividend if there's not enough cash in the company. And remember what retained earnings are. All of the net income over time minus any dividends that they've already given out. Now with respect to the journal entries for cash dividends, there are three dates that are very important that we must be made aware of. There's a declaration date. That's the day that the board of directors makes the declaration. It's during the meeting when they say, yes, we'd like to declare a dividend for this company. And then approximately two weeks later, there's a record date. This is the date of which the people who own the shares get to enjoy the dividend. So for example, if you own shares on the declaration date and sell them between this date and the record date, the new owner who owns the share on the record date is the one that's going to get the dividend. And then, of course, there's the payment date. Approximately, again, two weeks later after the record date is the payment date. This is the date that the check is made out. Now, you need some time uh, in order for the organization to get all of their paperwork in order, print the checks, find out who owns the checks on this date, find out who the shareholders are. So there's uh, approximately a month that goes by. So this happens, then two weeks later this happens, and then approximately two weeks later this happens. Okay, if you have the handout that goes with this video, this is the first part of it, I believe. This is the journal entry that would happen on the declaration date. So in this particular case, on July 3rd, the corporation declared a $50,000 cash dividend. The debit is called cash dividend, and it says common because we're paying the common shareholders. And the credit is a dividend payable. Dividend payable is actually a liability account. And the minute the declaration of a dividend happens, the company has a liability. They suddenly owe money to the shareholders. They do not have to give dividends at any point, but the minute they declare a dividend, then they have a liability. Then approximately two weeks later on the record date, there is no journal entry. Okay. However, this is the date, of course, that we just talked about it, where the ownership of the shares are determined. This is so the corporation knows who to pay. they got to mail the checks out to all those people. And then on August 5th, approximately two weeks later, these dates aren't exact, the dividend payable is now paid. So cash is going out, they're actually given the cash, and you're reversing this liability. Now let's talk about preferred shareholders and common shareholders. We've talked a lot about common shareholders and preferred shareholders up until to this point, and some of the features of the shares that go with them. Cash dividends must first be paid to preferred shareholders before any common shareholders are paid. So if there's enough money to go around, everyone could benefit from the dividend. However, if there's only enough to pay the preferred shareholders, then the preferred shareholders will get dividends and the common shareholders will not. If the preferred shares are cumulative, if that's one of the features of them, any dividends in arrears, that means the dividends may not have been paid last year. They must be paid to the preferred shareholders before allocating any dividend to the common shareholders. Okay, so they must pay last year's dividend to them and this year's dividend to them. When preferred shares are not cumulative or non-cumulative, only the current year dividend must be paid to the preferred shareholders before paying any dividend to the common shareholders. Okay, let's go to your worksheet and look at some of the examples. So Fitzy Core has $1,008 cumulative preferred shares and 50,000 common shares issued. 
What is the entry to record the Board of Directors $6,000 cash dividend as of December 2003? On December 31st, 2003, you were going to debit cash dividend preferred $6,000 and credit dividend payable $6,000. And the reason for this was because the preferred shares had an $8 dividend. And that is the number that we talked about here as a feature is the dividend amount. So every year, these 1,000 preferred shareholders should get $8 if the company declares a dividend. In this case, they declared $6,000, which is not enough to pay them the full dividend amount of $8, which means then because preferred shareholders get their dividend first, the sh common shareholders will get nothing. Now, the next question is, is there any dividend or any amount in arrears? So let's think about that. They were supposed to get eight, and if you divide this by the thousand preferred shareholders, they only got six dollars. And they are cumulative, so yes, there are two dollars in arrears for each shareholder. So yes, there are two dollars per share in arrears, and this must be paid before anything else. So if next year they declare a dividend, then that two dollars per share in arrears must be paid before the preferred shareholders get their additional eight dollars for that year, and before any common shareholders get any share dividends that particular year. Is this a liability? This dividends in arrears? No, it's not. Remember, dividends are not li liabilities until the declaration date. That's when they become a liability. However, any dividends in arrears should be noted in the financial statements. What is the entry to record a Board of Directors $50,000 dividend declaration on December 31st, 2004? Okay, so the very next year, the Board of Directors makes a $50,000 dividend. So let's think about everything that's going on here. We owe $2 per share, so we owe $2,000. Plus, remember the preferred shareholders that we have get $8 per year when dividends are declared. So really, we owe $10,000 right now to the preferred shareholders. Anything left over can go to the common shareholders, and there are 50,000 of them. So if there's anything left over, we have to divide it by that 50,000. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So here is the journal entry on December 31st. Cash dividend preferred is $10,000, like I just said. So the $2,000 that we owed them that were in arrears and the $8,000 from this year. That leaves $40,000 left over for the, cash, uh, for the common shareholders. So that's going to be another debit, cash dividend common. And then, of course, dividend payable, our liability account is going to be credited by the $50,000. Now, the next question is, what if the 50 preferred shareholders were not, they didn't have the feature of being cumulative? They were non-cumulative. What if they were non-cumulative? Well, then we would not have owed them that $2,000. Only the current year, $8 per share would have to be paid. You wouldn't have to give them that $2 that you didn't pay them the previous year. So the journal entry would look like this. The preferred shareholders would get their $8 per share, and the remaining $42,000 would go to the common shareholders. That would be divided by 50,000 of them, I believe there's 50,000 of them, yep, yeah, 50,000. Okay, by now you should be able to explain what cash dividends are, be able to journalize cash dividends for common and preferred shareholders, and understand what cumulative and non-cumulative are with respect to the preferred shares, and be able to journalize those. Thanks for watching.